Hello, my name is Ronald Griffin for ArtificialAnimation.com and in this Monday's tutorial we'll be taking a look at how to stabilize and motion track footage. So let's take a quick look at what we'll be doing today. So as you can see we've got some uh, shaky footage but this is a smooth handheld sort of stabilized look that you see in uh, some short films and even films and um, we've also got some text that's stationary. So let's open up After Effects and I'll go ahead and show you. Um, here in the beginning you can see this text comes up in the top left and uh, notice it's just have a little triangle element. I just threw this together real quick just to show you how it can be applied sort of to footage. And uh, you can see that it stays rock solid uh, pretty much by this um, light post here. So these traffic lights are pretty much what's keeping our text where it is. And we've got some handheld look. In the description you'll find a link to the footage I used here. I shot this with my 550D um, just randomly and I thought it could be uh, useful. So here we are using it. Now if I bring in this footage and uh, actually I have it brought in here and we just switch on the visibility you can see the original footage here and if I ram preview this um, you'll be able to notice just how um, jerky the original footage is and this is not a nice look for film at all uh, it's quite distracting you want those smooth fluid movements and in this case the lens just wasn't doing that by itself because it wasn't image stabilized so if we see here we can see in the edges, really really jerky, uh, violent shake. Um, and in the end, we've turned that into some really smooth um, swaying movements, rather. And that's the sort of nice handheld look I would be going for. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to drag the 550D footage into the Make New Comp button. And again, you don't have to use this footage. Um, and it is applied, or it is uh, supplied in the description. So, you know, if you don't have anything to do this on, you can use that. But if you do, Great, follow along with your own footage. First thing I'm going to do is downscale this footage to 720p. It's in 1080p. What downscaling will allow me to do is give me some more room in the edges to work with when we're stabilizing this footage um, without losing any pixels. So if we go to composition, composition settings, 1280 by 720, and make sure that it's uh, 30 frames per second or whatever your original footage is, hit OK. And we're just going to hit S for scale. And 67 in my case will bring it down to 720p. And so now I have my 720p footage. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is stabilize it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go to layer, new, null object, and I'm going to name this stabilize. And we're going to switch on the 3D switch for our original footage. So I'll hit the 3D switch. Go to layer, new camera. We're going to bring in a 50 millimeter camera, hit OK. And at this point, I'm going to select my original footage and uh, back at zero here. And what we'll do is, if you don't see the tracker panel down here, go to Window and then you'll have Tracker. So with the tracker panel open, I'm going to hit Stabilize Motion and we get a new window here. Now, the whole point of the Stabilize Motion system is to find a spot which this track can um, hook onto and stay latched onto for the duration. So, for example, you want to find... Um, a great single source of contrasted material that stays in your frame the entire time, if possible. If that isn't possible, you can always match different tracks together and such. But uh, in my case, this lamp post or this uh, traffic light here, sorry, um, is visible the entire time. And it's very high contrast. You can see actually if we move our mouse over it, the middle of this is actually pure white. If you look in the top right, my RGB here is 255, 255, 255. This is the purest of white and um, then you have all the way down black. So this is a very nice contrast point and I'm just going to select this for this track. We'll drag this up and don't worry if you have to spend some uh, time looking for this um, sort of particular track point in your own scene. It's important that you get it right. So we're just going to Put it there and also another thing i shouldn't have moved this into position make sure your timeline marker is at zero seconds and um, because we'll be tracking forward from there so at zero seconds line it up with where you want it and then we're going to hit track forward which is this little play button down here and now it'll just track through our scene and as you can see the track point is staying right on target there without any problems whatsoever and now that it's done tracking we're going to go ahead and click Edit Target. 
and make sure that your footage is selected. So my 550D footage, click OK, and then we're gonna hit Apply, and then X and Y, OK. And now, when we're back in our scene here, you'll notice that if we scrub through this, our footage is rock solid. Um, we have no shake whatsoever. But in my case, if we look at the clip carefully, we can see that this is not what we want at all because you can see we have a lot of noise. And if you look carefully at this traffic light, it goes out of focus, or not out of focus, but it has a bit of motion blur right here. And because we're shooting at night, we're shooting with a low shutter speed, um, low or high ISO rather, um, low um, aperture, and it just results in motion blur. Um, and so because the footage was jerky in the original, um, it wouldn't look good to keep the footage like this. We need to add that smooth swaying. So to do that, what we're gonna do is, inside the 550D footage layer, or your original footage, hit A for the anchor point, go back to zero seconds, control C for anchor point, and then hit A for stabilize, and the anchor point there, control V. So now we have all of the anchor point data from our stabilize, or sorry, from our 550D footage to our stabilize. Another thing that's important to do is make sure that the position of the stabilize matches up with the 550D footage. So if I hit P on both of them, you'll see they match up. And so what we're gonna do now is, um, before I go on, I'm gonna just add some black bars to our edges to give it that sort of filmic look. Um, and to do that, I'm gonna go layer, new adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna bring in a preset from Video Copilot, 2.4 aspect ratio, drop that on there. And because of this, I have to move that base layer down a bit so I get more of the sky. And that's why I'm doing it now, to show you that if this position differs, which it does now, 640-450 instead of 640-360, we'll need to change it, so 450. And in this case, we're good. So now we're gonna take this camera, I'm gonna pick whip it to stabilize. And now if we play it back, you'll see our, our shaky footage is just how it was when we started. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're going to hit A again. We're gonna alt click on the anchor point expression and now that we've got our expression box up, we can type an expression that affects all of these keyframes. So we're gonna type smooth, and it's pretty self-explanatory what this does, 0.3, col or, sorry, um, comma six, and then we're gonna close the bracket. So what this does is it smooths everything, three samples, six times a second. And now if we scrub through it, you'll see we have some really nice handheld footage, but, you can see right here, we've got some of this black bars going on and that is because of our stabilized footage. To fix this, we can simply hit S for scale on our original footage. And this is why I downscaled it earlier because then we can upscale it just a bit without losing any pixel quality. So there we have it. No black bars and some very smooth swaying motion on our stabilized footage here, which I'll RAM preview now. You can see we've got that really nice swaying. It's not jerky at all. All right, so from here on, we're going to place our text. So we're gonna track again, um, and this time it's going to be for our text. So I'll just uh, call this aspect, and I'll go to layer, new, null object, and we'll call this text. And uh, we're gonna select our original footage again, and then go over to our tracker panel again, and hit track motion. This time we're gonna use the same track point, or in this case, if you want to match the text to a specific area in your scene, you're gonna to have to find another track point, you know, something that suits you. Wherever you want your text to be, as close as possible to that, put the track point. So in my case, a high contrast area and where I want the text to be is this lamppost again. So we're just gonna track it again. So we'll track it from zero. Always make sure the uh, timeline marker is from where you want to track, by the way. Okay, now that we're tracked, we're going to edit the target again. Um, text, hit OK, and then hit Apply, X and Y, OK. So now we've got this tracker here, it's null object, and it's got all of our tracking data and it's staying perfectly in position. So now all we have to do is type some text, track footage, and we'll just move it into position and uh, I'll just mess with the font face to sort of make it look a bit nicer. And then what we can do is we can 
control D to duplicate. And we'll move this down. And I'll just give some brief information about the bus route. Um, and what I'll do is I'll scale this down and move it up. Then again, give it some character. And now I'm just going to quickly create a little triangle element just to give it a bit more, uh, well, excitement. So go to layer, new, solid, and make it the color you want. In this case, I'm just going to go for some red, red, pink. Hit OK. And then up here, if you hold mouse, um, if you hold your left click and you drag out, you'll get this uh, selection here. And I'm going to use a star tool. Just double click with the star tool and the layer selected. And I'm just going to select these points and delete them because, well, you know me, I'm too stupid to make a triangle. So I'll just do it the lazy way. So now we end up with the triangle and we'll drag it over. And the thing we want to do is we want to take this anchor point tool or the pan behind tool and uh, just grab the anchor point. And the anchor point is this little, th this little guy down here. And you just want to drag him to the middle of your shape. And what that does is it allows us to scale it up and down um, relative to that point. So if it was down there, then it would scale to him. I'm not sure why, why I'm giving the anchor point a gender, but uh, I like it that way. All right. So let's scale it down. I think 11 was the value I used. And so now we've got our elements. And at this point, I'm just going to pre-compose these. So from the triangle to the text, select them all, go to layer, pre-compose, move all attributes and hit, uh, actually, I'm going to name this text and then hit OK. And at this point, we're going to go into the text layer and we're just going to switch on the motion blur switch for all of them. I'm going to go back out to our footage and we're going to take the pick, pick whip from this text layer and parent it to the text. And what this does now is we're using this null object called text for the position of this text. So wherever it goes, the text follows. And as you can see, in this case, it's stuck perfectly to that traffic light. And when it moves, it's got motion blur. What we can also do is switch on the um, rasterization switch in the, in the middle here. Hit that, and then you'll be able to um, get the full quality of it. Okay, so now I want to animate the text real quick, and I'm going to start right here. So a cool thing about After Effects is if you leave this timeline marker right where you want it in this composition, and then we double click on text, the timeline marker will actually stay in the same place. So we can transfer over. And I know this is where I want my animation to sort of flourish. So at this point, I'm just going to move a bit forward. And for this triangle, I'm going to hit S for scale. We'll hit the stopwatch, and we'll go to zero move forward and we'll move this to 14 and then we'll move forward just a tiny bit one frame and then put it back to 11 so what that does is it comes on and it sort of springs and um, we want to switch on the uh, motion blur switch for this layer and then you can see for this composition rather and then you can see uh, it comes on and then we want these uh, text elements to come on so if we go over to effects and presets and type type writer it's a preset we can just drag it on to both of those. And now if we select both text layers and hit U on the keyboard, that brings up all our keyframes. We can see we've got this very long fade on. And we just want to grab these two last keyframes and drag them in. And then now I want to find where we want this to sort of go away. So if we go back into the original footage and uh, if we go over, let's see, here, this is where we want to sort of Go away, and we go back into the text again. It keeps our timeline marker. We can just copy these keyframes. So Control C and then Control V, and then it'll it'll put the keyframes right where your timeline marker is. And then I'm just going to swap them, swap that keyframe. I'm going to do the same for down here. Control C, Control V. And I'll swap those keyframes, and the same for the scale. Con control C, Control V and swap them over. 
Okay, so now all is said and done. And if we go back here, actually we want to make sure this keyframe gets swapped as well. So if we zoom in a bit, I want to swap that with that. All right, so now if we go back in, what we should see is the text coming on. Staying where it's supposed to stay and then going away. And that really is as simple as it is. Um, stabilizing the footage is probably the most important thing for the scene. Uh, it's the best thing I could have done for it because before I stabilized it, um, it really just didn't look that great. And at this point, just to top it off, um, I will just clean up the original footage just slightly. But you can see the text comes on stays where it needs to be, and then goes away. And of course you can mess with it, just a really rough draft, just to show you um, the potential. And uh, like I said, I'm just gonna clean up the original footage just slightly. We're gonna go to effects, color correction, curves, because it'd be unfair if I showed you an example and this looked slightly different. And we're gonna effect, color correction, tint. And what we can do now is we can go to effects. And I'm just going to use a plugin for this just to take away the noise. And I made a tutorial on this plugin, by the way. So you can find that on my channel. Put that above everything. And then if, or we're just going to search for unsharp mask. And we'll drag that onto there. And 100. Okay, and that's pretty much it. We are done with this tutorial. So I hope you learned something. I hope uh, stabilizing the footage was um, something that you didn't know how to do. And uh, you know, hopefully it's added something to your project. Um, so if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to shoot me a message here on YouTube or leave a comment, uh, anything like that. I do need suggestions for more tutorials. I do make tutorials every Monday, so it's a bit hard to uh, sort of keep up with new ideas, and so I hope everything stays fresh. But um, yeah, if you like this sort of stuff, please do like, comment, subscribe, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next Monday.